Hello viewers, so welcome to my channel. I'm Hashim Ali Khan. So far, seven problems I've completed on computing the income from capital gain. In this video, eighth, ninth, and tenth, three more problems I'm going to explain. So every problem you will find some new points. So focus on those new provisions. Always record, maintain running notes for all the explanation which I am giving here because this is very important. Income tax subject consists of so many provisions. So it's difficult to remember each and every provision. So always maintain a running note. So before starting the eighth problem, I expect my viewers to have a printout of the problems which I have given in the link under my description. Take the screenshot of the points, then I'll explain. Come on, see the eighth one. <clears throat> Mr. Vijay Raj purchased gold for rupees 5 lakh on 6th September 1989 and its fair market value on 1-4-2001 is 9,50,000. So actually gold is a capital asset. It's a long term because it was purchased very long back. If the gold is held for more than three years, it will become long term. So it was purchased in 1989 and the fair market value is 9,50,000. So whenever an asset is purchased before 1-4-2001, the SSC can choose higher of the two actual cost or FMB. Actual cost 5 lakh, FMB is 9,50,000. So he will take 9,50,000. On 16th January 2005, he has ordered to make an ornament of the gold by spending 2,26,000 cost inflation index 113. This is called cost of improvement. First he purchased the gold. Later on in January 2005, he is converting the gold into ornaments. So this is improvement. So this is the cost of improvement and on 14th of December 2013 he offered to sell this ornament to a businessman and received 1,50,000 as advance. On the agreed date of sale the businessman negatived the sale transaction and accordingly the deposit was forfeited. Here advance money was received for sale transaction but the sale transaction was not completed and advance money is forfeited. So whenever forfeiture is there, you have to see what is the date. Is it before 1-4-2014 or after 1-4-2014? If it is before 1-4-2014, the advance money forfeited should be deducted from the cost of acquisition. Here advance money was forfeited in 14th December 2013. That means before 1-4-2014. So this advance money forfeited will be deducted from the cost of acquisition. The cost of acquisition we are taking 9,50,000. From 9,50,000 subtract 1,50,000. 8 lakh rupees is the cost of acquisition. Then during the previous year 2022-23 the ornament is sold for 30,25,000 and the selling expenses are 25,000. So here now we should take the consideration received. The consideration received 30 lakh 25,000. From this selling expenses are 25,000 deduct. Net consideration 30 lakh. Now, we have to deduct the indexed cost of acquisition. So here, actual purchase price 5 lakh. Whereas uh, FMB is 9 lakh 50,000. From 9 lakh 50,000, subtract 1 lakh 50,000. So 8 lakh rupees. Cost of acquisition 8 lakh into 331 by 100. You will get 26,48,000. Now he has converted the gold into ornaments. That is improvement. The indexed cost of improvement. 2,26,000 he has spent. Current index 331. And the index in the year of spending the money is 113. Given the problem. So 331 by 113. 6,62,000. Take the total 26,48,000 plus 662. 33,10,000 is the total. Now subtract. 30 lakh minus 33 lakh 10,000, you are getting negative value. 3 lakh 10,000, 3 lakh 10,000 is the capital loss, long term capital loss. This long term capital loss cannot be set off from other incomes. 
it can be set off only from long term capital gain. So if you don't have long term capital gain during the current year, this loss can be carried forward to the next year. In the next year, if there is any long term capital gain from that long term capital gain, we can sort of long term capital loss. So current year, it cannot be set off. Calculate capital gain and tax liability. If the age of the SSC on the date of sale is 82 years, means super senior citizen and the income from other heads is 2,25,000. Actually for super senior citizen, the basic exemption limit is 5 lakh. So up to 5 lakh rupees, nil, no tax liability. So here in this case, his income from other heads is below 5 lakh rupees, below the basic exemption limit, so no tax. On long term capital gain, there is no long term capital gain, there is long term capital loss. So in other words, the tax liability for the current year is nil. That's it. Right? Now I'm coming to the next problem, problem number nine. Mr. Madan Mohan is an employee of a limited company and gets annual salary of 12,50,000. Then he, he owns a house in Jamshadpur which is used for residence. The house was purchased in February 2006 for 3,51,000. During 2008-2009, he constructed one more floor by spending 95,900. So first of all, residential house is a capital asset. When it is held for more than two years, it's a long term capital asset. So any gain arising from the sale of this house will be a long term capital gain. So he purchased in February 2006 and during 2008-2009, he has added one more floor improvement. On 9th May 2022, he entered into a contract to sell the house and received 1,50,000 as advance. As the sale transaction is not completed, 1 lakh rupees is forfeited through a mediator. So during May 2022, that is current previous year, he entered into a sale agreement and received 1,50,000 as advance. But the sale was not completed. So out of 1,50,000, 1 lakh rupees are forfeited. So this forfeited amount is done after 1-4-2014. So this 1 lakh rupees is taxable under income from other sources. It should not be considered for capital gain. Now on 17th August 2022, he sold the property for 42 lakh and selling expenses 2%. So 42 lakh rupees is the consideration received. And income from other sources 9200. Calculate capital gain and tax liability for the assessment year 23-24. Cost inflation index CII stands for cost inflation index. For 2005-2006 117, 2008-2009-137, and 2022-23, 331. For current previous year, it is 331. So we are required to compute the tax liability. That means we need to come calculate long term capital gain and also income from other heads. <clears throat> Mr. Madan Mohan, computation of NTC. Consideration received 42 lakh given in the last line. Minus transfer expenses 2%. 2% of 42 lakh, 84,000. Subtract 41 lakh, 16,000. This is the net consideration. From this indexed cost of acquisition. So actually he purchased the house for 3 lakh, 51,000. And current year index 331 divided by 117 is the index of the purchase year. It is given in the problem. So 351,000 into 331 divided by 117, 9 lakh 93,000 in bracket means subtraction. The index cost of improvement, he added one more floor by incurring 95,900 into 331 by 137, it comes to 231,700. So indexed cost of acquisition and indexed cost of improvement both should be deducted. So minus minus. So 41 lakh 16,000 minus 9 lakh 93,000 minus 2 lakh 31,700. 28 lakh 91,300. This is the long term capital gain. Now we have to find out the tax liability. So first we need how, uh, how much is the normal income. So normal income consists of income from salary 12 lakh 50,000. And income from other sources 9200 given in the last line and apart from that advance money received and forfeited 1 lakh 
that should also be taken. So total 13,59,200 is the total normal income. On this normal income, slab system will apply. The first slab is 2,50,000. Here age is not given. So when age is not given, we assume non-senior, below 60 years. So up to 2,50,000, first slab, 2,50,000 is the income, nil, no tax. From 2,50,000, 1 to 5 lakh. Next slab, income is 2,50,000, 5%, 12,500. The next slab goes from 5 lakh, 1 to 10 lakh. So from 5 lakh, 1 to 10 lakh, 5 lakh is the income, 20% tax, to 1 lakh. The balance, because income is more than 10 lakh. Total income is 13 lakh, 59, 200. From 13 lakh, 59, 200, subtract 10 lakh. 250 plus 250 plus 500, 10 lakh. So if you subtract 10 lakh, 359, 200 is the balance. On this 30%, 1,7760. Take the total, 220,260 is the tax on normal income. Tax on normal income. Now tax on LTCG, 20% flat. So 28,91,300 into 20%, 578,260. Add up both, 7,98,520. This is the total tax. On this 4% health and education says compulsory 31941 so 8,30,461 so round it off to the next 10 ignore that 1 rupee so make it 8,30,460 that is the tax liability tax due that's it now next problem is problem number 10 on 14th July 1972 Sri Naidu, age 64 years. 64 means uh, senior citizen. More than 60 years, senior citizen. The basic exemption limit is 3 lakh. Purchased a house property for 9,100. In 1972, he has purchased for 9,100. The following are the related purchases. Construction of first floor in 1998-99, 75,000. No cost inflation tax. Remember, whenever an asset is purchased before 1-4-2001, the SSC can choose either the cost or FMB, whichever is higher. So normally FMB will be higher. So we take FMB. So whatever cost incurred before 1-4-2001 should be ignored. Like 9,100 years purchased, ignore. 75,000 years spent in 1998-99, this also will be ignored. Then construction of second floor in 2001-2002 for 1 lakh. Inflation index 100. Then renovation of the house 1 lakh 5000. 2002-2003. Whitewash and painting. Whitewash and painting should not be considered. It is not a capital expenditure. It's a revenue expenditure. So this should not be considered. Fair market value of the property on 142001 is 3 lakh. So whenever the property is purchased before 142001, we can choose FMB. So we take FMB 3 lakh. During the previous year, 2022-23, the property sold for 48 lakh. Selling expenses 1.5%. And advance received 70,000. Actually, this advance received is not forfeited. It is the part of the total consideration. Total consideration 48 lakh. Out of 48 lakh, immediately he has paid 70,000. So ignore, we are not concerned with this advance. It's a part of 48 lakh only. Compute income from capital gain and tax liability if income from other head is nil. No other incomes are there. Only LTCG is added. Now, carefully you see, uh, Sri Naidu, computation of LTCG, consideration received 48 lakh, given in the last line. From 48 lakh, transfer expenses 1.5% of 48 lakh, 72,000. Deduct 47 lakh, 28,000 is the net consideration. Minus indexed cost of acquisition. The fair market value on 142,001 is 3 lakh. 3 lakh into 331 by 100, 9,93,000. That's the index cost of acquisition. So any cost incurred before this 142,001 should not be considered. Now, index cost of improvement in 2001-2002, 1 lakh rupees he has incurred in adding one more floor. So here, 331 divided by 100, because 2001-2002 index number is 100, so 3,31,000. Then index cost of renovation in 2002-2003, that is also a capital expenditure. 
1 lakh 5000 into 331 by 105 it is given in the problem index number when renovation was made the 331000 now subtract 47 lakh 28000 minus 9 lakh 93000 minus 3 lakh 31000 minus 3 lakh 31000 the net uh, LTCG is 30 lakh 73000 this is the long term capital gain now he don't have any other income normal income he don't have so basic exemption is 3 lakh because he is a senior citizen three type of assessees are there non senior senior and super senior up to 60 years non senior that means basic exemption limit 2 lakh 50000 above 60 years but below 80 above 60 but below 80 he is called senior citizen basic exemption limit 3 lakh 80 years and above super senior citizen 5 lakh rupees is the basic exemption here it is senior citizen so 3 lakh so total LTCG 30 lakh 73,000 minus basic exemption senior citizen 3 lakh subtract 27 lakh 73,000 is a taxable LTCG on this tax 20% 20% 20 of 27 lakh 73,000 5 lakh 54,600 to this health and education says 4% include 4% 5 lakh 76,784 the last 4 rupees we ignore 780 so 5 lakh 76,780 is the tax liability so so far 10 problems I have completed on computing the income from capital gain each and every problem in detail I have explained so if you want the perfect knowledge if you want to enjoy learning the subject income tax watch all the videos from beginning till end don't randomly take one problem or two problems like that watch all the problems inshallah we'll continue the next problem in the next video